thank you all for coming today and joining us. This is very exciting to be uh, invited to speak in front of all of you today. And my name is Jason Landry. I have 25 years experience. 11 of that was as a director of engineering for a modular manufacturer. Four and a half of that has been as a consultant for the modular industry. Um, I have expertise in design, engineering, and the overall production of modular structures from the beginning all the way to the end. So what I'd like to speak to everybody today about is the promise and imperative of mass customization. So how do we create a revolution in the construction industry? My belief is we do this by mass production and customization. I'm going to show you my, my favorite example, which demonstrates mass production customization to the highest level, the Ford F-150. This isn't a Ford commercial, but I think these facts are relevant. The best-selling truck for 42 years and the best-selling vehicle in the United States for 33 years. Who in here owns an F-150? <laughs> if we were in Detroit, it would be everybody. I actually had a client that invited me out to visit the F-150 plant, and the relevance of it was for the fact to see the assembly line process. And I was amazed. Has anybody visited the F-150 plant? All right. So just the logistics of building a vehicle every 53 seconds on a four-mile long production line, and the logistics of having that exact dashboard where you need it, that exact piece of that mirror where you need it, that flooring where you need it, was mind-blowing. Now, can we do that in the modular industry or the panelized industry? Why can't we? Why can't we get to that level? Because we haven't been challenged to get to that level at this point. So that's where we need to challenge ourselves. So why does Ford and the F-150, how do they do it? How do they produce mass production and customization? They have seven different model lines. XL, XLT, Lariat, King Ranch, Platinum, Limited, Raptor. Now, where these vehicles are all the same, they all share the same frame, same cab, same bed, same windows, doors, so on and so forth. A lot of the same parts, they're standardized parts. But what gives them customization? Different wheel packages, different grills, different interior, different trim levels. You can have cloth, or you can have leather. You can have AC, well, they all have AC. You can have different navigation, no navigation. So it's a level of mass production on standardization. And then they separate it by having different options for different trim levels. Now, the difference between an F-150 and having it customized might be your paint and that you get navigation. Now, you can take it to another extreme. You can take this vehicle and you can send it out to Shelby Motorsports in Las Vegas, and they can build you a 1,000 horsepower truck for 150,000, not 50,000 like you can with mass production and customization from a factory. So anything can be done. It's a matter of knowing the limitations of what a factory can and can't offer you versus what you can do if you have very deep pockets. So how does the construction industry create mass production customization? By following the auto industry, the most lucrative industry in the world. How do we do this? We do it by creating standards, developing standards that we can all go by, not codes. Codes are a level of standard that get us all for life safety in the right direction. We do it by creating standardized bathrooms and kitchens and so on and so forth. There are four items that I break it down to. Standardization, customization, education, and innovation. These are the four keys that are going to move this industry to the next level. So like I was starting to state, how do we do this? Standard kitchens. To be honest, every hotel room I go in, I walk in and say, should have done it modular. My room that I'm staying in right now, very easy. It fits all the parameters. Very easily be done modular. And I'm sure the Marriott company would love to produce a 1,000 of them, have them sitting there, and then ship them off to be set and built. Everybody's, well, some people are nodding their heads. Other people are still thinking about my F-150 reference. <laughs> um, same thing with bathrooms. So when you do this in a residence, I do a lot of multi-story, multi-family homes or buildings, excuse me. 
Um, I can honestly say I walk in to a two bedroom unit. I'm going to walk into a kitchen, a dining room, living room. I'm going to, that's my center module. I'm going to turn to the right. I'm going to have a shared bedroom or a bedroom with a shared bath, a mechanical area. And on the left side, I'm going to have a master bedroom and a master bathroom. And I'm going to have that 95% of the two bedroom units that I design or have seen come across my desk in the last 25 years. The bathrooms, then, I go into the bathroom, I'm going to have a tub, a toilet, and a vanity. I'm going to throw a linen closet in there, but that's a trick of the trade, and why I do that is for my connections. My kitchen's going to be the same way. I'm going to have three different options. I'm going to have an L shape, I'm going to have a galley, or I'm going to have a U shaped kitchen. I know how they work because they need to work with accessibility. So why is it when I get a set of plans from an architect, if I get 10 different plans, I have 10 different kitchens. They're all different. I understand variety is a spice of life, and we don't all want the same. However, simplicity, standardization can help us get to achieving 300,000 new structures in a year for people to build at. Bless you. Um, that's where I believe this industry needs to go. They don't redesign a vehicle every single year for every single customer. It's standardization. Now, I look around the room and I see some diversity and I, I'm probably going to reference some people that are a little older than me that remember when this industry really started going with the manufactured homes, you could get your trailer home any way you wanted it as long as you could flip it right to left and side to side and you had three color choices for your kitchen, but your kitchen didn't change. And you had some flooring changes, but you know you had three flooring changes. Your bathrooms didn't change. You had color changes. And they sold all the time. And the industry got away from that and said, well, everybody wants everything custom. So now we are not a manufactured <laughs> building. Am I at two minutes yet? I'm just kidding. Um, we're not a manufactured building, but we're a custom home builder inside a factory. So this industry as a whole has kind of gone from what made it extremely functional to somewhat dysfunctional, bless you. So now we need to get it back. And how do we do that? It's very easy with multi-story, multi-family buildings. People aren't as interested in having all of their, my unit has to be different than your unit. They really don't know because they just live down the hall from each other. Where it really needs to be focused on is some of the additional items, and we'll cover that in a second. So kitchens, bathrooms, mechanical rooms, uh, utility closets, so on and so forth. I explain to people, stackable washer dryer, here's the dimensions for it, here's all the details for it. Just put it, it's a piece to the puzzle. Put it in your unit, Mr. Architect, and design per this. But I've already worked out all the details on it. So just use this. I've done it 46 times on multi-story, multi-family buildings. So I know it works. And I know it works all the way through the process because I've built all of those buildings. Excuse me. Engineering, same thing with the structural design. I have some structural design experience. So I know if I do a 12, 14, 16 foot module up to 68 feet long and it's five stories high, I know what my frame is going to need to be at my first and second floor, my third and fourth floor, my fifth floor. I know essentially what I'm going to need for shear walls, so on and so forth. So there's some simplicity to that. Is it different in each region? Yes. Is it one size fits all? No. But it can be broken down into different segments to be able to work for different elements. HVAC system, same, same methodology. Details. The three biggest items I run into, accessibility items. So accessibility is in the code. Usually it's dictated very clearly in there what you need to do, what you can and can't do. So when I was director of engineering, I took my best member of my staff and I gave him 30 days. I said, I want a detail for every single sentence of the Massachusetts accessibility code. And six pages later, I had a detail for every single element of that. So it was never a question again. This is what we do every single time. So when the architect came to us, this is what we do. Review it, approve it, thank you. Fire rate assemblies, same items. We knew how we were building the structures. We did it repetitively. 
We didn't recreate a new fire rating each and every time or select a new UL assembly. Cross sections, we knew how we were building our buildings every time. The ease of that was also to be able to supply customization. You could get your ceiling heights any height you wanted as long as it was eight foot, eight foot six or nine foot. And we did that for the simplicity of your sheet, your sheet rock comes in 48s and 54s. So those are increments of eight foot, eight foot six and nine foot. Standard materials. Customer was adamant he had eight foot nine and five eighths. That's what he wanted for a ceiling height. I don't know why, but that's what he wanted. I said, certainly you can have that, but just be aware that you're gonna get charged for scrap. He changed it down to eight foot six. He lived with it, he was happy with it. Standard products, plumbing products, electrical fixtures, so on and so forth. Um, as a manufacturer, it's easy to buy in bulk. Um, the best example I have is actually sheet goods, uh, OSB. When I was working for KBS Building Systems, um, a manufacturer in the Northeast many years ago, we confronted our, our supplier and we asked him, how much is OSB right now? This was a while back. Eight dollars a sheet. We said, well, how do we get it cheaper? So we've got to buy a truckload or two. He said, well, what if we buy 20 truckloads? He said, well, I can sell it to you for $5 a sheet. Done. We bought 20 truckloads, full-size tractor trailers of OSB. That was eight months worth of OSB. That's how much we were producing. Um, but how much money did we save doing that? So to buy in bulk for a manufacturer or a general contractor even to that level is a huge benefit. So where does customization come in? Customization, offering trim packages, just like the automotive industry does. Affordable, standard, luxury. These are prepackaged. So you have a sheet that says, in your standard package, this is what all your products are. So you know what those products are. You know what your lead times are. You know what your pricing is. You know that it works in the unit. You know that you can have a product on hand or show an example to a potential client so that they can see it, they can feel it, they can touch it, they can know it, and it's already predetermined. You don't have to take days to go select one of 20,000 bathtubs for this client. It simplifies that. Technology packages. Millennials, not one. But they love technology, from what they've tell, told me. Um, you know, to, to use your phone, Yes, it's a small phone, I know. But to use your phone to turn on every light in your unit, to walk in, I actually did in the hotel room in Las Vegas at World of Modular, it was awesome. Walk in, there was one button, you hit everything, and it turned all the lights on in the room. Honestly, I played with the thing for about an hour. It was great. But to think about, to be able to offer that package, you know, in our homes, you know, that's a, a great option package that people just love. Energy packages, a lot of people are concerned about green technology. So how do we deal with that? Well, pre-select them. Pre-select what level of lead you want to achieve and design to that. And if you design enough parameters within your structure, then you can easily do that. And you can offer a green package one, green package two, so on and so forth. It's about creating standards, but having options that create a level of customization. Now, architects, dealt with a lot of them. They're all a lot of fun. And some of the biggest things is they say, well, I don't want to be limited to just a box. I want to be able to create what I want to create. I said, that's great. So why don't you focus on the exterior and the common areas? Because those are the items that the majority of the public are going to see. So those are the items you can focus on. And you can put your thumbprint on those items. But keep the unit simple. Keep them standardized, keep them very simple. That helps create mass production. Offer different countertop options. That creates customization. So now we, we're moving in the right direction of being able to produce more. So where does this all start? I believe it starts with education. That's why I'm here speaking today is to help share my thoughts with this group. Um, developers, it starts with the developers. The developer has to understand what their limitations are, what they can and can't do, and what the cost implications are for those items. Design professionals, 
same thing. My best projects were when I had an architect send me a set of schematic plans and then just kind of stepped away. And as a manufacturer, we knew how we wanted to build it. So we designed it based on our standards, how we wanted to design it. And then the architect would buy in on it and say, hey, that works. Let's tweak this or this. It was collaboration in that fashion, and it worked very well, very well. Contractors, a lot of contractors want to get into this. They want to do modular, but they don't know how. So as an industry of offsite construction, how do we help contractors understand how this process works? How the manufacturing process works, the lead times involved, so on and so forth. We have to get out there and we have to educate them. Probably one of the biggest items I would say is collaborative learning. What I explain to people is if you want to learn how to build something, there's no better place to learn than a modular manufacturer. Because you can see it start right from the beginning and you can see it go all the way through the production line. And the people in that factory would be more than happy to tell you if you designed it wrong. Not always pleasantly, but they'll tell you. So I think it's a great function of, you know, you can learn, I can design how to lay out that bathroom, how I want to lay out the plumbing. But if the plumber comes in and says, hey, if you ran it this way, it would be better, it makes no difference to me as the designer. It doesn't have to be my way. It needs to be the way that's most productive for a production facility and most conducive to being connected on site. I want to make it easy for the end person, the end user, because the reality is, no matter what we do, the people at the end, the subcontractors on site, they're going to be the people that need to make it work. They're going to be the ones that need to make it to code. So we might as well start at the beginning and help them all the way through the process. Innovation. How do we produce more product? The modular industry as a whole, I work on a lot of buildings, multi-story, multi-family. They're all in the 100 to 120 box range uh, modules. Um, for a typical manufacturer doing 10 boxes a week, which in my opinion is low, but that's what I do my schedules on, that's about 10 to 12 weeks worth of production. I'm about 10 to 12 months worth of pre-design to get it to that point. So it's not a good ratio. So why does it take so long? Because I deal with a lot of people that don't want to standardize. If I could standardize it, it would go a lot quicker. We could take that 10 to 12 months and shrink it down considerably. And that's through the whole schematic design and getting local permits and so on and so forth. So how do we shrink that down and then get a manufacturer to be able to produce faster? A couple ways to do that is new methods and materials. Um, you know, I work with a client right now that we're trying to develop different ways to fasten materials to make it quicker for a manufacturer to help reduce some of the labor so that they can produce items quicker. And how does the construction industry embrace technology? Slowly. Um, ironically. Um, if you look at how we build product, we're still building in a lot of the same mannerisms that we were 40, 50 years ago. Some things have increased. But how does that get better? How do we increase that more? Uh, we need more people involved and excited about technology and bringing it to the industry. And a lot of it, I believe, is overhead. Companies need to spend the overhead to do the research to get it to that direction. So why does modular production lend itself to mass production and customization? Because we have an assembly line process. Because we have standard parameters. Because we have standard materials. These are all items that help a great deal. How do we achieve customization? By presenting trim levels affordable, standard, luxury, creating option packages, tech packages, green packages, having these all grouped together so that it's easier to a la carte and pick items and say, this is how I want my building put together. We also understand, need to understand um, to supply the client with any option they want, to let them know that there are certainly ways you, you can build it any way you want. That's what I explained to them. It's just your money. That's what I explained to them. So how do we save you money to make this more affordable so that we can build 300,000 homes or residences? You need to make sure that you're making wise decisions on how you spend your money. So letting them know they can do whatever they want, but there's a premium to that. And if you want mass customization, then you have to use standards, just like the auto industry does. 
This is a client, these are examples. This is a client I work with in Boston. We have pre-designed units. One bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, inside corners, outside corners. So on all six of these buildings, the dwelling units are all identical and they don't change. The colors change, the textures change, but the unit layouts do not change. However, you'll notice that none of them look the same because the architect of record put his thumbprint on it and made those buildings custom to him and what he wanted to see and what the local neighborhoods needed to see. So the construction industry as a whole, it's not that we want to change, we need to change. We need to change as a group to be able to produce 300,000 new residences. We need new innovation, we need new technology. Labor shortages will definitely drive this. One example, the state of Massachusetts, the average age of the licensed electrician in the state of Massachusetts is 58 years old. They're mostly union and they're probably going to retire at 62. So labor shortages are going to be extremely important in the New England market very shortly, uh, particularly in the Boston area. But I'm sure that's not a New England issue. That is a countrywide issue. So labor shortages are definitely an issue that need to be resolved. Education will help point us in the right direction. Um, I don't know many universities that offer a modular program or many, Ivan can probably guide me some more, but there are some. But it's not, it wasn't even on the radar when I went to school. Um, and it should have been because the, industry's, it, the industry hasn't been around for 10, 15 years. The industry's been around for 70 years, just in different levels. So the education of it, it needs to get out there. It needs to be more prevalent. People get very excited about it. Modular, we're gonna build a modular project. Well, it's great to be excited about doing a modular project, but if you do it and you lose money, you'll never do it again. If you have a bad vehicle, you're not gonna go back to a horse. You're just gonna switch your vehicle. If you do a mad modular project, you're probably never gonna do modular again. You're gonna go back to what you know which is site built. So that's why a group of professionals that are interested in modular, you need to do it right. You need to make sure it's successful so that people want to do it over and over and over again. Technology will aid in the growth of mass production. Again, uh, Autodesk, um, they have the Revit software. It's a great software. It needs to go to the next level. It needs to be more modular friendly, okay? I sit with many architects that are using it. I'm like, oh, no, that's not how we want to show that. I want to show it how I'm going to build it. I don't want to show it schematically. I want to show it how I will actually lay that wall out. I want to show every stud. Um, I actually, when I was director of engineering, we actually took, we had AutoCAD. We didn't have Revit. And we took AutoCAD and we spent a ton of time creating a template so that when we did buildings, we actually cut our drawing time by three quarters. By taking the time to do a template, we knew where every stud in that building was, we knew where every plumbing pipe was. It wasn't 3D modeled, but it was demonstrated in 2D to show how to lay out that entire building. It was great for estimating and costing. I mean, um, purchasing, they could actually count studs if, if need be, so on and so forth. It, it took a lot of time to do that, and we didn't have anybody that was extremely technically advanced by any means. That wasn't my forte, nor was it any of my staff, but we took the time to do the simplistic point of view of it to get to that level. If technology companies like Autodesk can take it to the next level to actually not just show the schematic level, but show how it is physically built, I think that would be a huge asset. I didn't get my, my two minutes. My two minutes up? Now, I just gotta let you guys know, this was a seven hour presentation. <laughs> and they only gave me a half an hour. So, if you have any questions, I will be around all day. Please feel free to ask. Thank you all very much.